Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to the Bill and Franz show. We are back. Let's do this. Today our guest is Rena Hajat Carroll of the Diversity Awareness Partnership. <clears throat> Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So what is DAP? The Diversity Awareness Partnership is a nonprofit organization. We have been around for 11 years promoting diversity in the St. Louis region around race, religion, sexual orientation, gender identity, and disability. So everything that is under the umbrella of diversity, we do. Wow. And how do you do that? That is a great question. <laughs> so we have finally figured this out 11 years later. We um, do diversity in sort of three key areas. So one is our young people. So we do a number of youth programs that are getting our young middle and high school students thinking about issues of racism, homophobia, sexism, ageism, all of these issues really young and starting to get them to think about how does this play out in their schools and then how will it play out in their workplaces and in their communities. Mm -hmm. And then we do a significant amount of training. So in 2013 we trained about 2,000 people and those were people from small businesses, companies, local government, nonprofits, arts organizations. And this is just to increase their awareness and to make people understand that language is important, their actions, their behaviors are really important in terms of how we want our city and community to look. And then the third area is our publications. So we do a number of educational awareness pieces. So one of those is our interfaith calendar that has over 250 different religious holidays. Most people don't know that there are even that many holidays being celebrated wow. in a given year. But um, the St. Louis community has so many different religions here. Mm -hmm. And um, we think it's really important that people know all of the different um, religious traditions that are going on and just to be inclusive and sensitive to mm -hmm. to that because everybody doesn't celebrate Christmas. So do you go into schools and, and corporations and things like that and visit them? We do, right, mm -hmm. absolutely. So um, we we go into to companies and do our d different trainings and then we also bring people together in sort of neutral spaces. So for example, um, in, a, in a couple days we're, we're doing a religious diversity forum at um, a local church where we're bringing a Muslim, a Jewish, a Christian, a um, sort of spiritual interfaith person together to talk about religious diversity. And so we'll do forums like that throughout the year. Okay. Well, let me ask you something. Um, how do most people respond to the information? That is a great question. So <laughs> it's different. You know, I think most people will will um, be, be accepting and, and respectful of the work and um, it just sort of depends though on your personal story so if you have had um, <coughs> some experience with diversity or diverse identities or you yourself have been marginalized at some point or have been discriminated against then you'll be really excited our, about our work and you'll say how, you know sign me up how can I be involved what can I do and then if you um, maybe you're on the other side of that and you feel like you're the recipient of of um, some some reverse discrimination, which I don't, I'm not sure I believe in, but um, <laughs> you know, or you feel like, or you know, oftentimes we have people who will say affirmative action um, is 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 will dismiss it because they had a child that didn't get it, didn't get a scholarship or didn't get into school, but some other student of color did. So then they're kind of having some baggage around that. So then they want to fight and they want to <laughs> debate diversity and they think that there's no need for it because we have this you know biracial black president and we need to just get over it and everybody's good now and i think that's our biggest message is that we're not good you know we've done a lot and since the civil rights of course we've had so much progress and we're in a great place but we have much to do uh, a lot of work to, that to be done yeah how do you deal with uh, those of, who are belligerent about that or is that maybe not? Yeah, no, we, we do. <laughs> we deal with everybody. Um, so I think, you know, for me, it's about this concept of the movable middle. So there are people who are going to be on, bo on both extremes of this work, right? People who love it and are passionate and live and breathe in every meeting, every space that they can, they're going to talk about diversity. And then there's the people who um, are the belligerent, <clears throat> who, resist. who resist and who don't want to have anything to do with it and think yeah. it's stupid and would never donate, would never attend an event, you know, think that they are fine the way they are. 
and those people we're never going to change them and so i don't i don't want to try i don't want to waste my time mm-hmm. i am much more interested in those people that are sort of on the cusp they're like yeah this is interesting and i, I kind of i feel you know this way about diversity or i have these questions or i've never i've never met someone of color i've never met a gay person i don't know much about the transgender community i don't know anything about the baha'i community mm-hmm. or whatever it is and they they're interested and those are the people that we really want to focus on you know what well, i'm so happy that we're talking about this because i was excited about the uh, interview because I'm, I'm down with the whole diversity uh-huh. thing, you know i think we have a lot of work to do a lot of work to do and we're getting there yeah just gotta keep hope alive keep hope alive <laughs> <laughs> okay um do you want to take a break now or is it too soon for that uh, well, since you mentioned it, we're going to go and break. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take a break right now. Yeah. Okay. The St. Louis Fisher House is a home away from home, providing free lodging for the families of military men and women traveling to the St. Louis area for treatment. For more information, please contact the Fisher House at 314-894-6145 or visit us on our website at fisherhousenstl.org. Okay, welcome back to the Bill and Franz show. We've got more questions. By the way, her, the, the, um, the, the website is dapstl.org, is that correct? Yes. For Diversity Awareness Partnership St. Louis. And speaking of St. Louis, um, St. Louis has its own special diversity issues. Um, as myself and uh, other people who come from other towns and visit yeah. St. Louis, which both Franz and I are from out of town mm-hmm. originally, we notice there's yeah. more racial tension here than elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I also um, am in that camp. So I grew up in Chicago, was born and raised, and mm-hmm. then moved to Los Angeles for college and worked out there. Um, have been in St. Louis for about 10 years. And it was, it was shocking, I think. It was just shocking to me when I moved how racially divided we were. Yeah. And also, <clears throat> to, to be really honest and just real about it, it the, the fact that if you look like me, you really don't fit in anywhere because it's a black and white city. And that's how people talk about it. And that's, you know, when we talk about who do we want at the table? Well, let's make sure we have black people. Let's make sure we have white people. Well, what about Everybody people else. that look like me? Yeah. <laughs> um, and that was the hardest thing, I think, to really digest. And even still, you know, having people understand that, that our demographics are changing and that um, there are a whole sort of slew of other people that want to be at the table, want to be included, and need services and need items and you know need to to just be more inclusive as a city so i think i think we have we have a long way to go with that i'm I'm so there with you on that (laughs) i came here i came from el paso texas Mm -hmm. now el paso my neighbor judy she was a white lady judy can come into our house anytime the door was locked judy would walk in get sugar whatever (laughs) she wanted and then I had Mexican friends, you know, we were all just a, a community of mixed people. Right. So when I came to St. Louis, I was so, I mean, don't get me wrong, Texas is really racist in certain areas. <laughs> I knew where not to go in sure, Texas. Sure, okay? sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. But here it was different because I, I thought people that were cool with me, talking to me, laughing with me, mm-hmm. and they weren't really my friends, mm-hmm. you know. Oh, man, it was yeah. hard. I had to adjust to this type of um, segregation. Yeah. Yeah. When I first moved, when we first moved here, they talked about voluntary segregation, and I thought that was like the biggest load of malarkey I heard in a long time. But it's because it's more economic and things like that. And then you know, a lot about and thing about if I may be so bold is that people talk about racism. They usually talk about you know whites being bad to blacks, but there's a black presence that highly resents white people and lets them know here as well. It's right. a, it's yeah. a two way street. And then, of course, there's nobody else. Even made <laughs> right, right. I mean, you know, it was so interesting. My first few experiences in St. Louis, and even this happens today, people are really curious about what I am or where I'm from, and mm-hmm. they will be bold enough to ask, and they'll just, you know, they've said, I've, I mean, I tell this story all the time. In the grocery store, my first couple months of being in St. Louis, some man tapped me on the shoulder, and I'm standing in line, getting my groceries <laughs> at Schnucks. Personal and, space, personal space. Yeah, but he didn't have that, so... <laughs> You know, he was just 
just, and he was really trying to be friendly and mm -hmm. trying to make conversation and, and ultimately trying to make a connection with me. But he, right. he taps me on the shoulder, he says, excuse me, miss, what are you? And I'm like, what the heck does that mean? Like, what are you? And you know, again, I'm coming from LA where you have every single color type of person, yeah. you know, you name it, it's there. And so I just hadn't, wasn't prepared for a question like that. And so, you know, I'm thinking like, well, should I be smart and say, you know, I'm a woman, I'm a student, you know, whatever. But I, you know, I knew what he was trying to say. Uh -huh. So I said, um, I said, oh, you know, I, I must have just engaged in the conversation, but it's happened so many times mm -hmm. where um, people just, they don't know where to put you. And if you're different, they don't know, you know, that, then they really don't know where to put you. But um, it's also just not exactly knowing how to engage in the dialogue too, I think. We've been so segregated for so long and it's figuring out how do we either just kind of like tap dan dance around it or do we just talk about it and I think we need to be in the more let's be direct let's really talk about what the issues are totally agree I'm, I almost became an accidental racist <laughs> <laughs> when I moved to St. Louis Missouri because I was so friendly we were so friendly in Texas it's, the South yeah. is friendly anyway right but here I, I had to catch myself I was like ooh, my thoughts were going places that they didn't go before because they yeah. the things that I, I was mm -hmm. experiencing here and so I was like, let me just catch myself because I'm not going to let these people change me mm -hmm. or who I am. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I had to let go of a lot of things. And, okay, so this person might say this and say that, and it may be very offensive, but how can I say something back that's educated but at the same time? <laughs> no, <I'm just> like, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, sometimes. Yeah. That slicing, y'all, for, uh, you know. Yeah, you want to you wanna zap people to <laughs> sometimes make a point, but like, it never helps. It never I, helps. Even though I can't so resist. I, <laughs> kind of people are cool now, just like, okay, whatever, there is no. Right, exactly. You know, there's a, um, a philosophy around sort of, do you call the person a racist or do you call their actions right. racist, right. right, or discriminatory? And what's the more effective way? Because if I'm just sitting up here saying, oh, you are such a racist, then you've turned me, me completely down, sure. shut down, and, you know, I've probably done the same for you instead of saying, hey, you know, when you said the N word or when you didn't hire this person or when you right. did X, Y, and Z, it really made me feel like this. And I think it could have potentially been discriminatory or, you know, whatever. And so it's all about the dialogue and the words that you choose to use right. with people. Yeah, if, you ch if you label someone something that makes them a good person or a bad person, right. but if you separate the person from their actions, right. then you can say you're a good person, but that action Maybe not so good. Yeah, I mean, because the truth is that all of us, no matter what, we all have bias, we all have stereotypes, we all um, suffer from some level of, of exclusivity. We just, right. that's how humans are, are made, and, you know, we can't do anything to prevent that. And so what we know is that we, we all have this and that we all need to be working on it. And it's a journey for the rest of our lives. It's not like a, oh, I'm gonna go to diversity training and now I'm good and I'm, you know, not a racist or I voted for Obama, so I'm great, you know. I have a couple <laughs> black friends. It doesn't work, that, or a couple white friends, whatever you are, you know. It doesn't work that way. This is a this is an ongoing and, and a very intentional process. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we really try to get people to think about. Love it. I love it, man, because I'm excited about it. I'm looking at the situation when Obama became president I knew that some people were like, oh, it's over. Are you crazy? <laughs> you know, because yeah. this is just beginning. Look at all the tension that just came up on yep. this oh, issue. Yeah. This is something that we just had to speak about, haven't spoke about, and need to be talk about yeah. all the time. Because yeah. it's, it's, it's woven in the fabric of America. It's ugly, man. It, it affects our institutions. It affects our mass, inc mass incarceration rate. Mm -hmm. It affects jobs, social. It's, it's a, it affects everything in this society. So. That's why I, when we were talking about diversity, I was excited because I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I'm really mm -hmm. tired. I mean, I'm tired of just somebody looking at me because I'm a black man. All right. of a sudden, I have all these different di different stereotypes thrown at me and this right. type of treatment. I'm still a person who right. bleeds the same color, right. who has the same pain, cries the same tears. So why are you treating me like this? I still love. I still feel loved the same way. You know, so. Right, and I think you know. I think what's important to to also recognize is that what you just said. We need to always be talking about this. It's not just when Trayvon happens. It's not just right. when someone uses the N word. You know, it's not just. Do you remember the summer, the uh, Missouri State Fair? They had used the Obama. Um, 
the what was it the mask on the bull or something? Oh yeah, right. And and you know it's not when those big things happen. It has to be ongoing and, and a consistent conversation until we can say that that we are really in a in a more inclusive place. Okay. Did you want to tell us about some of your, your publications and things you're doing? Like I know that you have like your work with the Cardinals and the Rams and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. So when the organization started 11 years ago, it was really because of the St. Louis Rams, the Cardinals, and the Blues, along with Edward Jones and Webster University. And all of these entities came together to do some diversity messaging. And so in the last 11 years, we have done a number of different posters that feature um, players like Chris Carpenter, Shimago Tagwe, Eric Johnson, uh, John Jay. So a number of different players, notable players, and on these posters it just says, um, you know, it's good to be different or mm -hmm. um, divert, you know, differences are good or, you know, some really basic kind of tagline just to get people to start thinking about diversity from just a very non-threatening, just a very sort of superficial first kind of layer. And so we give those out to the community for free. Um, we print thousands of them, and so if anybody wants them, they can certainly <laughs> just go to our website and request them. And um, th those are they're free, and they're great for cafeterias, for hallways, for cubicles. Mm -hmm. Cool. So yeah. since in the last 11 years, have you seen an improvement in St. Louis? Um, so yes, I have. So when I um, moved here about 10 years ago, and I started the job seven years ago, I um, will be honest, I was ready to leave. I was like, okay, I'm going to do this for a minute, but really, <laughs> I want to go <clears throat> to D.C. or back to L.A. or somewhere because I just really wasn't feeling the city. You know, the city wasn't inclusive enough to me, for me. Um, and, and so I, I was still pessimistic, but excited to lead this organization at, at the same time. So I was a little a little bipolar because challenge. Yeah, yeah, it was a huge <laughs> challenge. I mean, and, and and to be totally honest, that's the reason that I stayed because someone said to me, Yeah, you could move to DC and you would be kind of covered a little bit from these issues because there's so much diversity and there's so much, you know, inclusion, but this is where you need to be. This is where the work needs to be done. And yeah. um, and, I, and to be honest, since I moved to St. Louis at that time, I had been complaining about all the issues. I had been like, this city is totally antiquated. We need, <laughs> they are not in the right century. So I was really, really not a good spokesperson for St. Louis. And now I think my narrative has changed. I think that what we are seeing in the business community is phenomenal. We are seeing companies and educational institutions that are hiring diversity officers. And so there are like chief diversity officers at companies and, and educational institutions like Webster and um, St. Louis College of Pharmacy and different places that are really intentional about changing the diversity in their little worlds. And I think that there is impact there for the rest of the community. So I think it's changed. Um, I think we have a lot to do. And I think the other thing that, that's going to just inherently change our city is the demographics. So um, 10 years ago, our city looked very different than it does now in terms of the Latino population, some of our African immigrants, our Asian population. So those numbers are changing. So, Well. Uh, if, um, thank you for joining us. Do you have any last final parting words for uh, for the community out there? D-A-P-S-T-L dot O-R-G. Um, I think the only thing I would say is that if people want to get involved, I think this is one of those topics that you just don't know really how to get involved. Um, we have a wonderful program called DAP Connect, and it's a program where um, you just get to come diversify your networks because what we kept hearing in St. Louis was I don't know anybody black I don't have anybody white in my network I don't know anyone gay you know I don't know anybody who's a different religion or with a disability and so we said you know what let's just be intentional about this and bring people together and so we do a happy hour a Cardinals game um, we have a concert coming up and just a way to, to bring people together and to support support the organization great well thank you very much you're welcome thanks for having me right. see you next time Billy Fry show y'all.